Is that your first question? Yeah, that's my first question. Just getting to know you. We need to work on the questions. Also, the show is called Meet John now, today at least, because I'm John. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. Understood. Maybe subsequent episodes could be called Meet John also. No. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us for part two of this interview with John Mensing. We'll pick up where we left off. What's important to you about the Firebase console experience? Because developers probably spend a ton of time in the console examining their data, looking at you know, whatever it is that needs to be um, uh, studied, like analytics in particular. Mm -hmm. You probably spend a lot of time pouring over data. What's important to you? Well, everything. Uh, I really hope that our developers find it easy to use. I think that's our top priority so that they really understand what it is that they're configuring and why it matters. And um, if there's something that they could configure that's maybe less important, then we would like to reduce the prominence of that or put it off to the side somewhere so that they have this really clean, easy to understand, uh, kind of uh, just friendly, happy experience of just you know set up, set up, set up, done. Right? Mm -hmm. Like that's the ideal. And so uh, I definitely care about analytics. I think that's something that's very important to the products that I work on. Uh, in, in growth, it's only possible to say that you've been successful if you actually see the user results, the end users responding to that message, right? Okay. So a notification that you send, it's, it's, it's only possible to say that that was a good notification if lots of people open that and then you know, respond how you want them to respond so as a developer. You're talking about um, Firebase notifications in the yeah. console when you send a message by just typing it into the console. Right. So actually both in-app messaging and oh, FC, notifications, like they both have this, this sort okay. of like this idea that the end user interaction is really important, right? Um, whereas some other parts of Firebase, they're, they're either, they're, they work or they don't work. Like the database kind of either works or it doesn't work. Uh, we measure the success of our, our products in terms of the results that they drive. Okay. So what would be your advice to developers who are looking to drive more traffic? What's the, the hint? The secret? The trick. Yeah. What's the secret sauce um, there? I think that just generally having a good notification strategy is important and thinking about it and, and being respectful to your users, but not being afraid to, to talk to them and to use notifications uh, to remind people to come back into the app. Um, so just doing it, I think, is, mm -hmm. is one of the most important things that they can do. And one of the best ways to send notifications is through the Firebase console. Mm -hmm. um, I think the same really applies to in-app messaging as well. OK, OK. So yes, so, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. So uh, with, speaking of uh, Matt, he works on FCM, or right. worked on FCM. And uh, we played a game called Good Cloud Message, Bad Cloud Message. Mm -hmm. And I proposed some sample messages, mm -hmm. and figure out whether they're good or bad. And the upshot of the whole thing is you don't want to be spammy, right? No, you don't want to be spammy. Right. Yeah, being thoughtful is important. I think uh, messaging is all about you know, who you're talking to and the way that you're talking to them and uh, sending the right message at the right time. It's rarely the, the case that you should just send the same thing to everyone because that um, that's just not how a message ought to work, right? right. Like you so ought you to have a conversation. Know who you're talking to yeah. when you send that message. It should be targeted. It should be focused. It should be, you know, respectful. At the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So, it, so it sounds like the advice would be to not send blanket messages to everyone, but use analytics uh, audiences to try to segment right. and figure out who is that that group of people. What do they like? What are they interested in? Yep. What do they want to hear that's relevant to them? Right. And, and figuring out the moment, the context that they're in as a user of your app and sending them the message that they need to get as opposed to a generic message that you know, sort of doesn't really work for anyone. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. No one would click on the generic message. No one would click on it. And no one would click on the spammy message. No one would click on it. But you would click on it if it had your name in it. That would just be creepy, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it would. <laughs> so don't do that. Don't put Don't do that names. either. Yeah. <laughs> so your interest in Google products, I understand, goes outside of Firebase. Mm -hmm. So you do some pretty crazy stuff in Google Sheets. I do, yes. I, I'm a fan of spreadsheets. Um, uh -huh. Earlier, earlier when we were preparing for this episode, um, the producer asked, uh, what is it that you really care about? And I said, the thing that I care about most in this world is not my family. It's not 
my, you know, anything like that, it's spreadsheets, you know? Spreadsheets is the wow. thing I care about more than anything <laughs> in this world. And I do use Google Sheets religiously, and I think spreadsheets are, are basically like magic. And uh, I would I would be able to sit and talk with you for six hours about spreadsheets if we well, have... I don't have a watch, but we don't have time. <laughs> if we have the time, we could do that. Well, so I've always been impressed by that because I have zero skills with spreadsheets. Right. And I've always seen these like wizardry, you know, right. like just charts and graphs and all kinds of crazy stuff going on in there. And I would love to see some of this. We had you, you prepared some stuff to show, right? I did prepare some stuff to show a long time ago and then I forgot to bring it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll just show, we'll just overlay well, it on the screen. Yeah, yeah, here is an example of a spreadsheet that I once made. All right. On the screen. On the screen. Yeah. Isn't it a very nice spreadsheet? <laughs> you can see it right now. <laughs> the folks at home are just going wild over the spreadsheet. Yes. Now, they, the one thing I also... did with spreadsheets, um, I, I hooked up Firebase with Google Sheets. So mm -hmm. I wrote some. Actually, I did it both ways. I made it so that you could insert data into real-time database and reflect that in a spreadsheet. And also the other way around, where you mm -hmm. can type data into a spreadsheet and have that change in real-time database. And I made some like animated videos of how that actually works, which was super fun to do. But that is about the limit of my wizardry with, with real-time with real database and spreadsheets. That is more wizard-like wizard than anything I've ever done with <laughs> spreadsheets. I've always stayed within the the confines of the, uh, of the, the grid. Itself. So this is pretty cool because what you could do is if you were, you, you could use real-time database to reflect in a graph in real time mm -hmm. what's going on inside the database. I would love to try to, I would love to work with you on that and try to get, try to get a demo going because I, I think, think that, that would sounds be very really compelling. Fun. Yes. Okay, we'll talk after the show. So what do you do at home besides games? You cook, right? I do cook, yes. Uh, it's become sort of a passion of mine over the last few years. Something that everybody needs to do. Uh, well, uh, eating well, is something get away. that everybody yeah, needs yeah, to do. Yeah, I was going to say. You so can get away with it not leads cooking. Into it. it leads into it. Yeah, uh, I've been cooking a lot lately. OK, so what do you make? What's your, what's your cuisine? Classic American, of course. OK. Well, no, I don't know. I've been trying out a few different things. I have a couple of standby dishes. And every, every week or so, I try to like get out of the comfort zone and try something new. There's something else you're into, and it seems like a lot of people are into this these days, uh, superhero movies, right? Yeah. So what's your favorite uh, hero? My favorite hero? Um, gee, that's a tough one. Well, it used to be Spider-Man, but I, I have to be honest, I don't like Tom Holland. Okay. I know. <laughs> I'm just He's like, ruined Spider-Man for you? <laughs> no, uh, I'm, I'm maybe of an older generation, so I was like a Tobey Maguire guy. Right, And yeah. you know, then they went through a couple more spider man since him, and, and nothing's been able to capture the original magic of, of the first couple. Yeah, I would say Tobey Maguire is the canonical yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, he is. Sure. He's Spider-Man to me. It's so. like Christopher Reeves is the canonical yeah, Spider-Man no, for me. But. No offense to Tom Holland, actually. No. I'm sure he's a very <laughs> no. lovely person. <laughs> so Spider-Man's on the Marvel side. What about the DC side? Uh, on the DC side... Um, well, gee, who doesn't like Batman? Right, yeah. 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 I mean, that's got to be everybody's favorite superhero. Yeah. Well, if you're into, like, that sort of dark, disturbed hero. Right? Yeah. I don't know if that's for everyone. But I think everyone has a certain appeal with the sort of, like, you know, like, uh, super rich, you know, right. CEO who at night, you know, defends the poor and the helpless. By... Yeah, like most Batman fans, I think he just really reminds me of myself. <laughs> a rich guy who goes out and yeah, fights just, crime at night. that describes me perfectly. So. Yeah, well, you and like a lot of people, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of things that are probably out of the ordinary, uh, I need to know what this is. Uh, I understand you have a statue of a frog butler. I do. Okay. It's, it's a functional, it's, it's a piece of art that has a, a specific function. Okay. It stands about yay high, uh, and he's got a little tray, and I put drinks on the tray oh, or okay. keys or remotes or whatever oh and he's very elegant and he's a my constant companion at home constant companion what follows right. you around well no i'm constantly sitting oh. in exactly the same place and he's right there so. oh so this is like next to your chair like whatever. next to my yeah my okay. place on the couch okay so it's like a coffee table butler right. i think everybody should have a frog butler they have dog butlers too, but frog okay. butlers are a little, I think they're a little more upscale. So. Yeah, well, we could look into replacing this with a uh, frog butler. Yeah, you, think that would, you think that would do something for this set? If, if <laughs> on, in the next show there was a frog butler here, I think everyone would really enjoy that, especially okay. whoever's sitting here, because they could, you put champ, it's mostly champagne that you put on this tray. I see. That's yeah. very classy to have your champagne delivered by a frog butler. I think yeah. we're going to have to, to give he, that a shot. He, he's, Poor at delivering, but on the other hand, he always delivers, right? Like right, yeah. We're stable and consistent. <clears throat> and steady, stable. Right? Where do you get a frog butler? Where are we? <laughs> um, Is this like on Amazon? It, like, was, you... it, was on, it was an online purchase. We actually saw the frog butler 
like at a wedding at a very fancy place. And so we thought we're going to be very fancy as well, and we're going to buy a frog butler. And so we went on to Google search. That's okay. The only place you can find things on Google. Uh, yeah, you, you don't want to look on Amazon. You look on Google. Type in frog butler, and then voila, frog butler. Okay. That's that's what we got. I won't ask how much you dropped for this frog it was, butler. I'm just gonna I'm gonna surprise too much. myself. It was too much money, <laughs> but I think that we've gotten a lot of value out of our frog butler. He has he has a name. It's Charles. Charles. So, okay. Well, that's yeah. Very but if upright. I said put put the thing on Charles or like put your drink on Charles at Charles's tray, that they wouldn't have any idea. So okay, we refer to him as the frog butler. Okay. Well, uh, you can give him a name tag. Just yeah, Charles, that's and then true. Everyone will know, right? He has a set of spectacles as well. He's very elegant. Yeah. No, I mean, I've, I've been trying to like visualize what this is in my mind, and I'm intrigued yeah. with this frog butler. So. Yes. Uh, definitely worthwhile purchase. Well, John, thanks for being on the show. Mm -hmm. I uh, appreciated your visit here in the in the fire basement. I want you to invite me over, and so I can see this frog butler Absolutely. before I purchase one. <laughs> I think everyone should have one. Right. And for everyone else out there, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Meet Firebase. To get more video content like this and other videos, be sure to subscribe right here to the Firebase channel on YouTube. And I'll see you here next time. Let me show you. Okay. So by increasing the physical distance between us, we're adding emotional distance, which is important. You are one weird dude. <laughs> <laughs>